Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. On this week's program, we talk with David Newman, a Missouri farmer and president of the National Pork Board. We also have features from the Kansas Soybean Commission and Kansas Department of Agriculture, along with our weekly updates from the Kansas Livestock Association and Paragon Ag Advisors. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org. And the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat, online at kswheat.com. In agricultural news from agview.net, corn and soybean crop insurance guarantees have dropped just in time for the spring planting season that's right around the corner. Well, that means that farmers get less protection against low prices in their revenue policies this year. Guarantees $3.88 a bushel for corn, $9.17 for soybeans. Those are down 12 and 37 cents respectively from last year. Officials come up with those spring guarantees by averaging the daily close of the December 20 corn and the November 20 soybean futures uh, through the month of February. Now it was poor timing as commodity prices dropped during that final week of February as the global markets responded negatively to the spread of the coronavirus. You've got to get a lower benchmark, a lower revenue guarantee so you have less coverage than you would otherwise. Those words from Jim Mintert the director of the Center for Commercial Agriculture at Purdue. He said from a farmer's perspective, it's a huge downer that the market collapsed at the end of February rather than in early March, as it sometimes has. Now, depending on the volatility of some factors, including the price guarantee calculations, lower guarantees could lead to lower premiums. Well, only a small fraction of farmers are aware of the right to repair legislation that's been considered by state legislators in recent years. That's according to a recent survey. The legislation would provide unfettered access to proprietary embedded code, jeopardizing the safety and sustainability of modern agriculture equipment like tractors and combines. Now, out of more than 500 farmers surveyed, only 28 percent aware of the right to repair legislation but a majority of farmers believe that they should be able to repair their own equipment. So to help educate farmers about the safety, environmental, and legal risks associated with the right to repair legislation, the Association of Equipment Manufacturers, we know them as AEM, engaged attendees at this year's Commodity Classic. And more than a dozen states currently considering right to repair legislation that would provide access to proprietary onboard diagnosis systems and that could result in a loss of warranty, physical risk, violation of federal emission laws and accelerated engine wear. The survey was commissioned by AEM as one conducted to gauge perceptions and understanding awareness of right to repair laws around the country. And that survey found that three out of four farmers believe that they already had the right to repair their own equipment, but seven of ten farmers also believe they should be able to conduct repairs to all aspects of their equipment, even if it relates to federally mandated safety or emission standards. And U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer says the Trump administration's trade agenda resulting in a blue-collar boom. The Trade Policy Agenda Annual Report was delivered to Congress recently, and he highlighted the trade accomplishments over the last year, including the signing of trade agreements with Mexico, Canada, China, and Japan, as well as enforcement actions and efforts to bring a change to the World Trade Organization. Lighthizer said President Trump seeks new trade agreements with the United Kingdom, European Union, and Kenya this year, and that would be the U.S. first free trade agreement in sub-Sahara Africa. The 2020 trade agenda also includes the enforcement of commitments by trading partners in trade agreements, including the USMCA China Phase 1 agreement and WTO agreements. For more on these and other stories, go to agview.net. 
Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Livestock Association, supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O H L D E seed.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future at kansascorn.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics. But how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Joining us now is David Newman, a uh, farmer from Missouri, and he is the current uh, president of the uh, National Pork Board. So, uh, David, thanks for being here. And, Absolutely, uh, thank you. Uh, the pork industry has been one that has uh, definitely had some challenges, but there's still some, some good news, and let's, let's tackle a couple of those. And with the pork board, of course, pork board is the checkoff side. That's and, right. And you and those farmer leaders that sit on that have really uh, taken to task where you, you want to see the future of the checkoff. Yeah, that's... It's, it's, it's an excellent point in being producer-led, right? So, so part of our pork checkoff program, you know, the thing that we say all the time is consumer-focused, producer-led. That, that is an enormous piece of our operations and what we do. So over pork checkoff, uh, it is research, promotion, and education. I mean, that is, our, that is our charge since 1986 when the Pork Act and Order was passed. So really, you know, what we're doing today is, is to think back on this and say, go all the way back to 1985 and 86 when all of this began, the, the checkoff. Uh, that was pork 1.0. And now we're at 4.0, starting here uh, late 2019, uh, early 2020. And, and to put it simply, we don't farm the same way we farmed in 1986. We have this unbelievable rapid pace of technology uh, that's moving in right now. Uh, that's, that's really shaped our business, right? Not just our business, but the whole world for the last 20 years. So, so as we move forward and we look at this, our producers need to have a checkoff that does uh, reflect on itself, that says, here's where we've been, here's where we're going. We want to be working with our producers that, that, that getting ahead of the curve for our future producers, uh, not just domestically, but internationally. So here comes for, pork checkoff 4.0. Uh, it is consumer-focused, producer-led, and it really boils down to two buckets. Bucket number one is building trust. That is the things like our We Care message, this, you know, this pin right here on my coat. How are we being good stewards of the land, the environment, animal welfare, and engaging our community? The other piece is adding value, so um, domestic marketing and international marketing, marketing to the new generation, Generation Z, millennials, uh, multicultural, um, and how we're going to shape that so that we can keep protein on the plate as a protein of choice. Talk about that, working with other proteins. Uh, one of the issues that keeps getting brought up is those that uh, aren't 
uh, meat-based proteins trying to get a part of that market to share? Sure. So uh, right now, if you are in the meat industry at all, you have heard a, a tremendous amount about alternative proteins. So whether they are cell-based or or plant-based proteins, and certainly that's something that we're very aware of. Um, National Pork Board has conducted a lot of research in that area as well. Uh, this is this is what I would say is is as a as a nutrient source for humans. Uh, meat holds a very uh, a tremendous position there. So we talk about the essential vitamins, nutrients, the role that not only protein but fat plays, vitamins and minerals, you know, those type of things. The other piece is, is we do know that our, our next generation of consumers are concerned about ingredients, uh, number of ingredients, those type of things. And uh, we say this quite often, but, but our, our ingredient only has one piece and that is pork so uh, you know we don't we don't have to worry about those things between sodium and other things we're concerned about uh, we're a one ingredient product David Newman is the president of the National Pork Board let's take a break we'll be back with more in just a moment the Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Grain Sorghum growers working together learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org grass and grain online or in the mail keeping kansas farmers informed for over 60 years grassandgrain.com and agview.net serving the beef belt and western corn belt with reliable and relevant agriculture information agview.net many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours the Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics and soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years, and we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas Corn Farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. And joining us is David Newman, who is the president of the National Pork Board. He's a farmer from uh, central Missouri. And uh, David, uh, obviously we talk the pork industry. We, we have to talk about uh, African swine fever and, and the impact that has had, even though it, it's not in North America yet, but it has definitely had a direct impact back to American farmers. That's right. Well, I mean, African swine fever is, uh, uh, as many people know, it's an extremely... Uh, you know, from a disease standpoint, it's extremely bad. It's, it's, it's had a, a major impact around the world, uh, not just China. We've talked a lot about China when it comes to ASF. Uh, you know, Russia has been dealing with ASF for more than a dozen years. So Russia, China, Vietnam, South Korea, the Philippines, you know, so we've seen this spread of disease around the world, uh, and it's resulted in a tremendous loss of, of, of hogs. Uh, in the marketplace, to the to the tune of more than 300 million head, which is more than double what we can produce in the United States. So, so it's 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 a it's a huge deal. 
is something we're very aware of. We're putting a tremendous amount of resources into not only the prevention of getting ASF, but also understanding ASF, understanding what we can do from a biosecurity standpoint. Uh, you know, there's no vaccine for ASF today, but what can we do to help mitigate and prevent? It's something that I'm sure will be an ongoing conversation, and uh, so that's something I'm, we'll continue to get updates on. Before I let you go, I, I do want to talk about some of the efforts by the pork checkoff in in in, in making sure that pork is one of those uh, uh, center of the plate type yeah. thing uh, when it comes to uh, you know Generation Z, the millennials, and, and and what seems to be they are changing the dynamics when it comes to really the the food industry. Yeah, absolutely. Well. The, you know, let, let's use the, the original example about pork 1.0 in 1986. 1986, we were still predominantly marketing pork to baby boomers. Today, that, that is no longer the case. We are into a generation, let's call it people that are, that are 30 and younger today, represent an entirely different demographic of consumer. And uh, some of the things we've done at, at, at the Pork Checkoff, for example, is we've engaged in a more digital strategy, understanding and engaging with companies like Google and understanding what millennials want, why they want it, when they want it. Uh, the recipes they're looking up, the ingredients they're looking for. We've looked and we've understood now, or we're starting to understand um, portion size, packaging, pre-cooked, processing. These are things that matter. Uh, you know, think about the way that home delivery has revolutionized our business. So how are we going to move forward? And this is one of the pieces about 4.0. It's staying ahead of the curve. That's what's important because Generation Z and the millennials are our primary customers. They're the people stimulating the economy through the purchase of meat. And as we look at all of the diverse things with livestock and meat, you know, in some cases being under attack, we need to be focused on our consumers so that we understand what they want. David Newman, who is the president of the National Pork Board. Very interesting stuff. Find more at pork.org. We'll be back in just a moment. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. The 2020 Kansas Legislative Session has been extremely busy and productive for the Kansas Soybean Association. The association has presented written proponent testimony either individually or jointly with other organizations and oral proponent testimony numerous times. KSA presented written testimony on Senate Bill 295 before the Senate Assessment and Taxation Committee. The measure prohibits property tax valuation increases solely as a result of normal repair, replacement, or maintenance of existing structures. It was passed by the committee by the Senate and is on its way to the House. KSA supports Senate Bill 267. The proposal reduces the violation of the statute requiring secured vehicle loads of forage from a misdemeanor to a traffic infraction. It is on general orders in the Kansas Senate. 
The association also offered written testimony in the House Agricultural Committee on House Bill 2437 early in the session, which is being led by the Kansas Livestock Association. This bill prohibits the use of identifiable meat terms on labels of meat analogs without either an accompanying disclaimer that the product does not contain meat or inclusion of the word imitation before the name of the meat food product being imitated. This bill is viewed by most parties as a positive first step in truth and food labeling discussions. Last session, the association worked to pass House Bill 2326. In this session, House Bill 2411 makes needed tweaks to it, ensuring the economic impact of agency rules and regulations are reviewed by the director of the Division of Budget. The session is not over yet, and there's sure to be more to come, and the Kansas Soybean Association will continue to stay in tune to what's happening at the State House. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Kansans have a new choice for Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans. With Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans from Kansas Farm Bureau, you have access to four levels of coverage, affordable rates, and service from an organization that served Kansans for more than 100 years. For more information on Kansas Farm Bureau Medicare Supplement Plans, including rates and to apply, visit kfbhealthplans.com. and tradition of farming and ranching in Kansas lives on today as agriculture remains at the heart of our state's health and prosperity as the largest industry, employer, and economic driver in Kansas. Hi, I'm Heather Lansdowne with the Kansas Department of Agriculture, and I'm proud to share that the month of March has been proclaimed by Governor Laura Kelly as Kansas Agriculture Month, and Tuesday, March 24th, has been declared Kansas Agriculture Day. Join us as we celebrate the contributions of the ag community as we raise awareness that the crops and animals grown on farms and ranches in Kansas are feeding Kansas families as well as families around the world. Every year on Kansas Ag Day, we celebrate by joining our industry partners in the capital to share information about Kansas agriculture. Ag is Kansas' largest industry and economic driver with 68 agriculture, food, and food processing sectors, combining for $46.9 billion in the Kansas economy. In Kansas, there are nearly 46 million acres of farmland, which accounts for 87% of all Kansas land, some harvested for crops and some serving as pasture land for grazing animals. In addition to growing crops and raising livestock, the Kansas agriculture sector includes food processing, research and education, renewable energy production, agribusiness, technology, and many value-added enterprises. And Kansas farmers and ranchers make a global impact, exporting more than $3.8 billion in agriculture products. Find out more about Kansas Ag Month on our website, agriculture.ks.gov slash ksagmonth, or follow along on social media at hashtag ksagday and hashtag ksagmonth as KDA celebrates the past and the future of agriculture during Kansas Agriculture Month. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families in rural Kansas for more than 100 years. We're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. 
No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. Kansas Livestock Foundation now is accepting scholarship applications. Applicants must be graduates of a Kansas high school and except for veterinary students, undergraduate students at a Kansas community or senior college. The Merck Cartridges for Cash program offers $1,500 scholarships to K-State veterinary students and $1,000 awards to undergraduates studying animal science. Barton County KLA members turned in the most cartridges at the 2019 convention, guaranteeing them a winner provided a qualified student applies. Hampel Oil and Mobile Delvac will offer $1,000 scholarships to juniors and seniors at K-State and Fort Hayes State. Go Bob Pipe and Steel will sponsor a $1,000 award for a student attending a Kansas junior or senior college. Proceeds from the 2019 Kansas Cattle Women Silent Auction and KLF Club Calf Sale will fund $1,000 KCW and Youth and Ag Scholarships. Scholarships in the amount of $1,500 will be offered in memory of Doug Lau. A $500 scholarship will be given in memory of Fred H. Woodbury from Quinimo. Students residing in Chase, Franklin, Lyon, Osage, and Wabunsee counties will be given preference. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Good morning, Colette here with Paragon Ag Advisors. Well, uncertainty remains it seems, but markets have been interesting. While the corn market remains pretty sideways, we've seen cattle go both limit down and limit up recently, and beans have actually tacked on a few gains as of late. Nearby, basis remains strong in both corn and beans, but it truly looks like we're going to need a weather story or a significant increase in demand to see grain markets move higher, especially with coronavirus concerns flooding the markets. Between the trade deal, ASF, and coronavirus, Chinese headlines have truly been a big player in markets this year. Other factors in the markets include the dollar and the Fed rate cut. In the last couple of weeks, the U.S. dollar has come down, and early this week, the Fed lowered interest rates half a percentage point. This 50-point basis reduction is the first unscheduled cut in over a decade. There's no way to know how the coronavirus will impact the economy or markets long term, but one thing's for sure, planting season is near. As you get busier, don't let your marketing and risk management slip. Whether you need to get rid of your old crop or haven't started marketing your new crop, give us a call at 888-452-8751 to get a plan in place. Or give me a call at 785-338-9603 and I'll sign you up for our daily market updates. I'm Colette with Paragon and I'd love to help. Well, that's our show this week. Be social with us online, kansasagreport.net. Like us on Facebook, the Kansas Ag Report Television Show. Follow us on Twitter, the Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.